Welcome to Stuff Lab. I'm Gwen. And I'm Marty. And Marty. It's Fax Day. It's Fax Day. It is special Fax Times. Uh, we had a suggestion from a user, Chris Brown, to do the 12 days of Christmas. But there's a little bit of a caveat. We're going to do 12 days ending on Christmas. Okay. Which technically, the first day of Christmas is Christmas Day and goes into January. Okay. So we're going to do... 12 fact videos, one a day, so there won't be regular uh, Wednesday videos for most of December. There'll okay. be a few. Okay. All right, so we're on the first day of Christmas. You don't have guesses besides these. What is the first day of Christmas? Uh, partridge in a pear tree. There you go, partridge <laughs> in a pear tree. <laughs> All right. Where, this is a double one. So for each category, <clears throat> there's partridge and pear tree. Oh God. Um, okay. So Partridge, where do you think they live? I'm just gonna say America and Europe. So like United <laughs> States America or yeah. like, okay, so. Well, I'm pretty sure they're probably in Canada too. Canada. Yeah, North America and Europe. And Europe? Yeah. Like this kind of Europe? Yeah. Yeah. For Partridges, their native distribution through Europe, Asia, no. And parts of Africa. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So pear trees, where do you think those are native to? My parents' backyard. Uh. <laughs> okay. Anywhere that fruit trees grow? Probably, I'm guessing Europe again. Um. You're guessing Europe again? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I'll say Asia. I. I never think fruit trees when I think of Africa. And I'll say Northern South America. So like including Mexico, Central America? Y yeah. It's so like kind of like this? I'll go down a little more. A little more? Like say when. Like there. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's my best guess for where they're native from. All right, so they're native to coastal and mildly temperatured regions of Western Europe. So okay. good job there. Yeah. North Africa. Really? Huh, okay. And east across Asia. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Did, did America have anything, like, <laughs> fruit-wise? You know, other than, like, cocos, I guess. Uh, that's not really a fruit, though. I don't know. It just seems like everything. What? I don't know. We just have a lot of stuff that comes from Europe. Yeah, we do. Yeah, well, well it's, it's the old world. We're considered new world. I guess so, yeah. Description. So there's a buttload of different uh, partridges. Okay. So I think most of the information I've gathered is from the gray partridge. The but, old devil guy? Uh, no, this isn't a gray partridge. Oh, I was gonna, how does he fly? He just looks so chubby. Like a little tiny head. L little, it looks like little tiny wings and just a big old soccer ball for body. Do you want me to figure out which kind of partridge this is? I mean, sure. Yeah. Future Glenn, find out what kind of partridge that is. What? Oh, I know what kind of partridge it is. Oh. I just have to go in and get it. Um, That is a great partridge. Oh, okay. Throughout this, we'll have a chestnut bellied, a crusted wood. This is the gray. We'll have a red legged, a scaly breasted, a snow partridge, and a partridge from Taiwan. A partridge from Taiwan. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so description. Uh, partridges are a medium-sized, non-migratory bird. Okay. They're smaller than a pheasant, but larger than a quail. Okay. Height and weight. Uh, it varies across the species, but roughly they're 11 to 13 inches. Okay, that's not really so technically this that is tiny of a bird. Technically, this is length. Because the measure is rank to wear. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, so we're on to pear trees. What about their weight? It varies by the species. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. So pear trees. Mm hmm. Height <laughs> 33 to 56 feet. Oh, geez. Yeah, they're tall boys. Yeah. Temperature. Like like the climate that they grow in? Yep. Okay. Mm, that kind of looks like a dick. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> God. Uh, most are hardy up to what negative degrees? This is a this is a range. It's all it's in the negative for both of them. Let's see here. 
Well, I mean, like I said, my parents had one in their backyard, and that was uh, Minnesota, so it was terrible. So I'm going to say they're good to negative 45. Okay, so what's the low end of the negative? So these are the winter hardy ones, so it's a range depending on which kind you get. Oh, um, so another negative? Yeah, so this will be a smaller, a closer oh, to uh, zero 15. number. 15. You're very close. It's negative 13 to negative 40. Oh, okay. Um, and this is in Fahrenheit. Okay. And the evergreen variety is only tolerant to about five degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, geez, okay. Right. Diet! What do you think they eat? Uh, I guess little tiny bugs. Little bugs? Mm-hmm. Oh, little beetle boy. Um, <clears throat> berries and like small plants, I guess, would be in there. And they don't really, uh, God, I don't know, because birds always throw me off, though, because like, it's hard for me to, mm, I'm going to throw it on there. Uh, small rodents. Small rodents? <laughs> yeah. I'm not 100% on it, but maybe. With a little, little mice or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, they eat seeds, so I will consider okay. that seed and granary. Grapes. Grapes, like specifically? And insects. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. Pear trees. Since um, they do photosynthesis, this is <laughs> diet con consisting of uh, what people have done with them. So the Romans... Mm -hmm. Romans <laughs> ate them raw, ate them cooked. There is a book called Natural History by Pliny mm -hmm. uh, recommending stewing them with honey and noted three dozen varieties of pears. There is a Roman cookbook. It is called this. Dairy Conquinarina. That is my guess. Um, so there are current copies of this book that you can purchase. Mm -hmm. um, I did put a link to an Amazon link. We're not affiliates, but if you're interested in seeing them, it has old, old world Roman recipes in it. Like, like old, old world. Like old, old world. Okay. Like this was a cookbook <clears throat> and then it somehow survived and they just transcribed it into okay. American English. <laughs> So you can make real Roman foods. Uh, it is called something else, the title is, mm -hmm. but it's this. This Roman cookbook uh, has recipes for a spice stewed pear souffle. Oh, that sounds good. That does sound really good. <laughs> Predators for Mr. Partridge here. Um, larger birds of prey. So tickle me feet? <clears throat> yeah, lots of tickle me feet. Um. People. Um, uh, I'm not gonna say like, I'm not gonna say, uh, I don't know. I don't feel like it'd be like large mammals cause like I feel like they just kind of like, man, whatever with these birds. But I'm gonna say like, like foxes. Um, um, bobcats, so like that kind of, in that size range of, of, of uh, four legged mammalian predators yeah I, I think i get what you're putting down here yeah yeah okay we have humans mm -hmm. uh because gray partridge and regular red legged partridge are bred in captivity specifically for game hunting birds okay so people for sure uh foxes badgers rats hedgehogs cats okay. wild boar most carnivorous mammals Wait, large reptiles and larger birds Wild boar eat meat? Yeah. Pigs eat meat, Marty. Well, yeah, I mean, I know they eat meat, but like, I didn't know they, like, seeked it out. Well, to be fair, a partridge is not the smartest animal on Earth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Most carnivorous mammals. Okay. Then uh, large reptiles and large birds. All right. So, a pear tree. What do you think their predators are? People and things that enjoy fruit. <laughs> People and things that enjoy fruit. <laughs> yeah. Um, flying foxes, bats and whatnot. Uh, well, we've got caterpillars. No. <laughs> the butterfly. Thora. 
uh, Thora. Thora is his parents' dog, who uh, steals pears off of their pear tree. It jumps for them, eats them. <laughs> and uh, it's not this specific moth, but I need a mothy shape. And moths. So people, caterpillars, butterflies, moths, and the dog. <laughs> I can't imagine like bears and stuff wouldn't try and eat them. Like bears like sweet stuff. Uh, this is predators are things that go out of their way to get to these things. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Not just what's what it's in their diet of. Right. These are oh. things that specifically go after these. Okay. Things. Okay. So we're on to breeding. Partridge, gray partridge, mate in the spring with an average clutch size of what, Marty? Clutch size is how many eggs? Mm. Six eggs. Six? Yeah. <clears throat> no! 10 to 22. Oh god, okay. <laughs> That's a lot. Pear trees. About how many varieties of pear trees are grown worldwide? We said the in the old timey cookbook there was at least three dozen variety. At least, and this is just in Rome. I know I was gonna say, and that's like old time. Or what Romans had available to them. Oh, so worldwide. I was gonna say 100. 178. No! About 3,000. Oh my god! <laughs> okay. About 3,000 known varieties of pears are grown worldwide. It's a lot of pears. That is a crap load of pears. Status! What do you think the status of the partridge is? My least concern. Just. We're saying it's, least it's concern? A, it's a partridge. Well, you are correct. Okay. <laughs> Least concern, but populations are decreasing. Okay. Pear trees. <laughs> Least concern. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do they have a do they have a thing for plants too like this? Um, I'm sure they do. I'm just not aware of it. Okay. It didn't have a listed thing, but uh, pear cultivation in cool temperature climates extends back to the remotest antiquity, and evidence exists of its use as food since prehistoric times. Oh dang. Yes. There are three species that account for the majority of edible production. It's the European, cultivated mainly in Europe and North America, mm -hmm. the Chinese white pear, and the nashi. That's an A. Both grown mainly in Eastern Asia. Okay. So out of 3,000 different varieties, we eat three. Mainly. Huh, all right. Lore! Can't wait to do the lore of a partridge. <laughs> According to Greek legend, the first partridge appeared when I think it's Daedalus? Through his nephew, Perdix, off the sacred hill of Athena in a fit of jealous rage, supposedly mindful of his fall. The bird does not build its nest in the trees, nor take lofty flight and avoids high places. So this guy threw this guy, and he turned into that guy. <laughs> you know, I really wish I was around back then to see them come up with these things. There's a lot of people around nowadays, and a lot of people are like murdering their kids and throwing people off of bridges, and we haven't had one person turn into an animal. Not that you know of. I mean, I'm pretty sure someone have a smartphone out. You know, just like, oh, someone's killing someone. Oh, they're a wolf now. And like, Well, no. I mean, back then it was, oh my God, Daedalus just threw his nephew off this hill and oh my God, he turned into a bird. Scribble this on the tablet, quick. I mean, one thing's for certain, we still have tablets. <laughs> Didn't have to plug theirs in though. More lore. Partridge has been used as a symbol that represents Kurdish nationalism. Shirko Kermanj discusses the paradox of symbols in Iraq and attempts to make a distinction between the Kurds and the Arabs. He says that while Iraqis generally regard the palm tree, falcon, and sword as their national symbol, the Kurds consider the oak, partridge, and dagger as theirs. Okay. Pear tree lore. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here, pear trees were far more interesting <laughs> than the partridges were. Pear trees grow in the sublime orchard of this guy, Alcinius, in the Odyssey. Uh, the pear tree was an object of particular veneration, like the walnut, in the tree worship of the 
what I assume is Nock, of the North Caucasus in Vainok mythology. The Vainok people today are the Chechenians of Chechnya. Pears and walnut trees were held with the sacred abodes of, it's not be be benevolent, beneficent? Sacred abodes of beneficent spirits in pre-Islamic Chechenian religion and is so forbidden to fell them. It's like you can't... Can't chop down a walnut or a pear tree. Fun facts! Partridges, there's over how many species of partridge? Oh god. Um, 110? No! 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> pear wood is the preferred material in making high quality woodwind instruments. <laughs> okay. And furniture. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, 2018 pear production. So we have China leading, then the United States, then Italy. I ran out of room. Argentina and Turkey. Throughout these countries, we made 23.7 million tons. Oh God. How many tons do you think each of these countries made? Oh God. Uh, is it in that order? Like, like China made yes. the most, Turkey made the least? Yes. I would say Turkey did like a half million tons. China probably did 12 million. And then fill in all the math from there. Well, China did 16.1. Oh God, okay. So second place. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> and you were correct with this. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. China is killing it. Last fun fact. Pears, mm -hmm. uh, pears are ripe when the flesh around the stem gives to gentle pressure. <laughs> so that's how you know when your pears are ripe. Marty, now that you've learned about the partridge and pear tree, what do you think? You know, if you wanted to give me a partridge and a pear tree, I guess I could, you know, you'd have eggs and pears. I guess. Yeah. I thought pears were far more interesting than the partridge were. Well, yeah, it just seems to me like the partridge is like, ah, it's just, it's not a bird. But uh, pears are very old and very historic, apparently. Pears are so, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for day one of the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with day two. Bye. Bye.